Hello, and welcome to the final lecture on the binomial theorem. Uh, in the previous lecture, we saw a few examples of objective uh, questions you might face in an exam type situation uh, based on the binomial theorem. And in this lecture, we will continue uh, looking at a few more examples of the application of the binomial theorem. Uh, so once again, to recap, the binomial theorem is given by x plus y the whole power n equals summation r equal to 0 to n, cr, x power n minus r, y power r, where cr is used to denote ncr. So let's look at the uh, first example. Uh, this example asks you to uh, determine which of these numbers is larger. So just the larger of 99 power 50 plus 100 power 50, which I'll call to be n1, and 101 power 50, which I'll call to be n2, is, and the options are uh, n2, n1, C is n1 equals n2, and D is none of these. Well, right at the top, uh, you should notice that none of these is not a valid option, since uh, given two natural numbers, one has to be uh, greater than the other or equal to the other. So this is not, you can straight away cross off none of these. So if you're able to determine that one of these is greater than the other or equal to the other, then you can uh, can narrow on options uh, A, B, or C. Also, uh, before you start off on this problem, uh, you should try and uh, uh, look at this intuitively. So notice that the exponent uh, n power alpha for any alpha grows very fast. So intuitively, I would expect 101 power 50 to be greater than 99 power 50 and 150. Uh, but let's, let's try and work this out systematically. So for, for, to work out this example, uh, I'm going to consider the difference 101 power 50, uh, between 101 power 50 and 99 power 50. The reason will become clear soon. Um, so let me see. Uh, you can write 101 power 50 as 100 plus 1 whole power 50. And I can write 99 power 50 as 100 minus 1 whole power 50. So the motivation is to somehow cancel powers of 100 and still remain uh, uh, and hope that the remaining number is greater than 100 power 50. So this evaluates to, uh, using the binomial theorem, you could derive this to be uh, 2 times, 2 times uh, 50. So the leading coefficient is going to get canceled. And you could have 50 C1, 100 power 49 times 1 power 1, and 50 C3, 100 power 47, 1 power 3, and so on. This is going to continue until 50 C49. So these are the only terms which remain when you uh, subtract these two terms, the binomial expansion. And if you expand this out, it gives you 2 times 50 is 100, and 100 times 100 power 49 is 100 power 50. The first term itself is 100 power 50. Second term is uh, 2 times 50 C3, 100 power 47, and so on. So notice that all of these subsequent terms are positive, and since the first term itself is 100 power 50, this whole sum is greater than 100 power 50. And so we've shown that 101 power 50 minus 99 power 50 is greater than 100 power 50. And this means that n2 is greater than n1. So the greater number is n2. So this shows uh, a way in which, uh, this example shows you a way in which you can compare binomial numbers, essentially. So let's look at another example, uh, which is slightly different than the examples we've seen so far. Uh, it asks you to evaluate summation r equal to 0 to n minus 1, ncr over ncr plus 
and see r plus 1. The options are n over 2, n plus 1 over 2, n times n plus 1 over 2, and n times n minus 1 over 2 times n plus 1. So since you have four uh, concrete options given to you, uh, it is possible to derive uh, the right answer just by plugging in a suitable value of n. Uh, but for the purposes of this lecture, we will derive, uh, we will look to derive the result in a systematic manner. So notice that the summation, the de de denominator term, the summation has ncr plus ncr plus 1. So that's a f in a form in which you can use an identity to uh, simplify it. So the given term is summation r equal to 0 to n minus 1, ncr, and ncr plus 1 plus ncr is n plus 1 cr plus 1. So we're using the identity uh, ncr plus ncr plus 1 equals n plus 1 cr plus 1, which we've seen in our previous lectures uh, many times. So you can, so now you notice that you have ncr over n plus 1 cr plus 1. So these two binomial terms don't seem to differ very much. So if you write out the definitions of ncr and uh, uh, n plus 1 cr plus 1, you would expect most of the terms to cancel. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to write summation r equal to 0 to n minus 1, uh, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial uh, times r factorial. This is n minus r factorial. Uh, this is the definition of ncr. Definition of n plus 1 cr plus 1 is n plus 1 factorial uh, divided by n minus r factorial times r plus 1 factorial. So this is the definition of n plus 1 c r plus 1. So let's see what that evaluates to. So we have summation r equal to 0 uh, to n minus 1. Uh, we can cancel n factorial from n plus 1 factorial. So it just leaves n plus 1. You can cancel the n minus r factorials out. Uh, and you can cancel r factorial from r plus 1 factorial, which just leaves r plus 1. So this just simplifies to uh, summation r plus 1 over n plus 1. Notice that the n plus 1 is independent of r. So this just happens to be 1 over n plus 1. Summation r equal to 0 to n minus 1, r plus 1. Now you can uh, re-express this using a change of indices to be 1 over n plus 1, summation r equal to 1 to n, r where I just use the change of indices to simplify my summation. And this is very easy to evaluate. It's just n into n plus 1 over 2, which is the summation r equal to 1 to n r. And you divide the whole thing by n plus 1. It gives, gives you n by 2. And you see that option A is n by 2. So this was a systematic way of deriving uh, the, this result. And notice that in this case, we only applied as uh, on, we only initially applied the identity ncr plus uh, ncr plus one equals n plus one cr plus one, and then on we realized that it might actually be easy to just expand these terms to uh, simplify the summation, which is what we did. So let's look at yet another example, which you might uh, face in an exam. And this example says if one plus x plus 2x squared, whole power 20, uh, equals a0 plus a1x plus so on till a40, x power 40. Then find the value of a0 plus a2 plus a4 and so on to a38. The first thing to notice is that you're adding all the even coefficients except that you are not accounting for a40. So you, if you're going to sum over all the even coefficients, you have to remember to subtract a40 from your result. So, so if you want to get at the even coefficients, uh, one way to do it is to evaluate 
is to evaluate all of the coefficients uh, and then subtract the odd coefficients out. But there doesn't seem to be an easy way to just extract the sum of the odd coefficients. So when you're given such kind of a problem uh, where you're asked to find uh, the sum of su subset of coefficients, uh, you have to try and plug in suitable values of x so that you can arrive at the result. So the way to get the sum of all the coefficients, obviously, is to plug in x equals 1. And that will give you a0 plus a1, and so on, till a40, which gives you sum of all of the coefficients. And that is plugging x equal to 1 gives you 4 power 20. So that's a way of obtaining all of the coefficients. Now, how do we try and determine uh, just the even coefficients is the question. So you can plug in x equals minus 1 now. Uh, and doing that uh, would give you a0 minus a1 uh, plus a2 and so on uh, till plus a40 uh, equals 2 power 20. So we plugged in x equal to minus 1 so that we could alternate signs between the even or not coefficients. And so this give, gives you this following sum equals 2 power 20. So to obtain only the even coefficients, you just add these two sums uh, to obtain 2 times a0 plus a2 and so on till a40 equals 4 power 20 uh, plus 2 power 20 which implies a0 plus a2 and so on to a40 equals 2 power 19 times 1 plus two power 20. Yeah, so I've just factorized this expression and written it in this form. Uh, yeah. So, so we've got a naught till a forty, uh, which turns out to be this expression. Uh, so, if you can subtract a forty from this result, uh, then you can uh, then you can obtain uh, obtain the value of a naught till a thirty eight. So, let's see what a forty is. So a40 equals the coefficient of x bar 40 in the expression. So the only way in which you can uh, obtain x bar 40 in this expression is uh, just by assigning, uh, just by raising 2x squared to the power 40. So, so if you write the binomial expansion out with this as your x, and this as your y in your binomial theorem, then you realize that the only way in which you can get x power 40 uh, is by raising y to the power of 20. And so the coefficient of that term is going to be 20 c 20 2 x square power 20. So that is going to be the term which corresponds to x power 40 uh, in that expression. And so the coefficient of x power 40 is going to be 2 power 20. So that is the coefficient of a40. Uh, that is the coefficient a40, uh, in which case you can derive a0 plus a2 and so on to a38 equals 2 power 19 plus 2 power 39 minus 2 power 20. So the options for this example uh, are 2 power 19 times 2 power 20 minus 1, 2 power 20 times 2 power 20 minus 1, 2 power 19 times 2 power 19 minus 1, and none of these. So if you evaluate this uh, result, uh, you would see that this 
corresponds to 2 power 19 uh, times 2 power 20 minus 1. So that's a systematic way in deriving uh, this result. So notice that we wanted to find the sum of a subset of coefficients of the expansion. And to do that, we plugged in suitable values of n, uh, su sorry, suitable values of x, by which we could uh, only uh, we could isolate the sum which we uh, decided to compute uh, by using suitable combinations. Uh, so let's look at one final uh, exercise uh, problem, uh, and that will be the end of this lecture. So the exercise problem essentially asks you to show that summation r equal to 0 to n CR, uh, I'm sorry, this is not the right one. It asks you to show that uh, C0 over 1 minus C1 over 5 plus C2 over 9 and so on equals uh, 4 power n times n factorial over 1 times 5 times 9 and so on till 4n plus 1. The last term in this expansion is going to be plus minus 1 power n cn over 4n plus 1. So you're asked to show that this alternating sum uh, gives you 4 power n times n factorial times uh, whole divided by 1 times 5 times 9 and so on. So I won't uh, work this problem out, but I would like to provide a hint for it to, to the viewer. Uh, so notice that you have 4n plus 1 appearing in the denominator instead of uh, n plus 1 as we've seen previously in our examples. So to obtain 4n plus 1, uh, you need to have, uh, you need to integrate x power 4n, right? So if you integrate x power 4n, then you would obtain a term of uh, 4n plus 1 in the denominator. So you can do this by, you can do this by a suitable integration. So look at the binomial expansion of 1 minus x power 4, the whole power n. So the r, the r plus 1 term is going to have x power 4r. And if you integrate that, you would get x power 4r plus 1 divided by 4r plus 1. And plugging in a value of x equals 1 will give you this term in the corresponding expansion. Uh, yeah. So that is a systematic way of uh, deriving this result. So I leave this problem as an exercise to the viewer. Uh, so I thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lecture series on the binomial theorem. Uh, stay tuned for more lectures uh, in the series. And I refer the viewer uh, to further additional exercises on the binomial theorem in your standard references. Uh, thank you for your attention. It has been a pleasure teaching this uh, series. And I hope you enjoyed watching it once again. Thank you.